Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Christmassy scene. It's going to have a little street lamp and some lights and some branches and a little couple there holding hands. Um, we're going to try to keep this really simple tonight for beginners and make it a project that you can do um, really easily with uh, your family. So um, for the holidays, I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat during our live show today. So if you've got questions, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to use a square canvas for this today. You could really crop this any way that you wanted to, but I decided to go with a square. So I'm using a 10 by 10 inch uh, Pro Series Dixie uh, cotton canvas from Fredericks. Uh, it's got a nice wide sides and uh, 10 inch side makes it pretty easy for the camera, but you could really make this as big as you wanted to. Um, our brushes are going to be, uh, we've got a couple of unconventional materials today. We're going to be using some sponges. Um, a flat sponge like this or just some sort of a kitchen sponge will work. We're going to do a new technique on the background uh, to try to get that kind of cloudy effect with that. And then I've got a couple Q-tips for some of the dots for the lights. And then for some of the um, shine around the windows or, or the little lights, whatever, um, the glass light sections there. Uh, we're going to do, uh, we've got a 3 8 inch and a 5 8 inch different stippler and a quarter inch and 3 8 inch uh, Willow's Blender. I'm not sure which ones we're going to need, but I've just got them just in case. And uh, that'll give us like a little bit of um, texture there, a little stiff bristle brush to add some dry brushing. Uh, and then I've got a couple of liners here, script liner and a 10 aught number two script liner, 10 aught uh, liner for the branches, just whatever you're comfortable with using. And then I've got an angular shader for um, some of like basing in the couple, possibly. I'm not sure if I'll need that one. I've got a 10 aught uh, fan brush for some splattering and then I've got a select fix it so if you don't have well you probably don't have this brush but you probably have these in hand so I'm gonna show you how to do it with the dots with this brush too possibly so we'll see and uh, this is called a fix it brush so man you've already said the s word what did I say oh caught splatters splatters oh yes yeah. <laughs> I know. the s word q-tips okay <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I've been sick today, so I'm a little off my game. Uh, we almost canceled, but we decided to push through, so we'll see how it goes. But, uh, okay, I've got a number one and number two round here. Uh, this is the Velvet Touch series. This is the 6100 in the um, green handles, and then I've got a large flat number 12 bright there. So thank you to Fredericks, uh, our canvas sponsor, and Princeton is our brush sponsor um, for providing our materials tonight. And um, let's go over our colors really quick. I've got Carbon Black, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Cadmium Yellow Light, Cobalt Teal, <laughs> uh, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Ultramarine Blue, Doxazine Purple, Quinacridone Magenta, Cadmium Red Light. Uh, this is Unbleached Titanium. Not sure I'm going to need that one really, but I just threw it out there just in case. Then I've got a lot of white here, probably more than I need and some zinc white and then this is the glazing liquid that i like to use um so i think the first thing i want to do is just spray my canvas with a little bit of water what that does is just kind of activate the fibers get them damp um just one spray is all you need you don't want to make it wet you just want to get it a little bit damp and then i'm going to do the same with my sponge just kind of dampen it a little bit and I think I'm going to use my brush to kind of mix some colors on my palette that I can use with my sponge. So I'm going to start with cobalt teal, a little bit of thalo blue. Cobalt teal basically you can mix with cobalt with a thalo green and thalo blue um, and white. So it's it's basically those colors. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to do a really light version so with some white here. And... Then I'm going to grab some burnt sienna, a little bit more of that burnt umber, or I'm sorry, a little bit more of the thalo blue, and create a teal, dark teal, and then I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue. Oops, I didn't turn off my phone. 
Uh, you didn't mention My that. My brother David. <laughs> David. I'm in the middle of my show. <laughs> Just started. <laughs> David says hi. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. Turning that off. <laughs> I even said phone's muted. I didn't hear you. Oh. I'm not in my best. I'm not doing my best today. All right, back to the live show. Okay, thanks. <laughs> that was awesome. He's like, hey, what you doing? <laughs> My live show. He obviously doesn't watch, so. <laughs> I love that family support. Thanks. I know, I know. I love that. My family. No, most of them do. <laughs> Every now and then. They, believe it or not, they have other things that they like to do. Get a little lonely. Sit around and watch us. And you never come in around. <laughs> Well, none of them paint. I'm like literally the only one in my family that does art. So, <laughs> well, I take that back. My extended family does does art, but my from my siblings, no. All right, uh, my siblings and my own kids. <clears throat> All right, so I'm and going spouse. to and spouse. Yeah, I'm pretty much outnumbered here, but y'all are very supportive. Very sweet. All right, so I'm just kind of getting the paint off my brush here. And then I'm going to leave it in my water, but I won't I won't leave it in there for long. I'm going to grab up that light blue. I'm going to just smush it around my canvas here. I'm going to smush it larger than I need it to be. And then I'm going to get my next that I want next to it and just kind of smush that around. This will make this go by pretty fast. And I'm starting light. You can always add more dark. It's a little bit harder to cover up the dark or the, yeah, the dark with the lighter colors than it is, you know, obviously to cover the light colors. So just always start kind of light and go darker. So I'm just going to keep on kind of doing this little Circular motions. I'm not using a whole lot of paint here, but um, grabbing some purple up here. So I always put the color where I want it darkest first. So I'm just going to pop that on where I want it the darkest. And then I can kind of smush it around. I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue just on its own. Up in here. You can see how nicely that blends it out. It's a lot easier to do it this way than with the brush. Can you can you go over the uh, <clears throat> the mixed colors? Uh, yeah, that was just really basically all of my blues with various shades of white. So I just have um, thalo green uh, or thalo blue with um, burnt sienna to make a, right here to make a kind of teal. And then I use some cobalt teal. And uh, add some of this in. I may have to let this dry before I add a whole lot more because once your paint kind of gets to a certain point, it, it like won't stick, you know, anymore to the canvas until it dries. So I'm just going to kind of do a little bit more sort of right in there. And I'm going to turn it over and use the clean side and get a little bit more of this lighter color. And just put that back in and kind of push back out the dark area. Just a little bit. Okay, that went there. I don't know where that's from. There we go. That was super easy. I found that technique from my friend Cinnamon Cooney. I watched one of her videos the other day on blending. I was like, I've never tried that. And man, it works good. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Cinnamon.
<laughs> Definitely like that. All right. So now I'm just kind of going back in and kind of lightly scuffing up the edges, kind of adding some like little stuff happening in there. Let's go ahead and use my sponge brush, my other sponge, not my sponge brush, but my other sponge here. And then I'm going to grab these colors, a little bit of the burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of purple, just kind of using all my blues, a little bit of purple. The burnt sienna just kind of tones it down, makes it look a little bit more realistic. lighter color in there. I don't want it super dark yet. Okay, so I'm kind of just, and this is not necessarily looking like, supposed to look like trees. I can use this one to kind of buff it out and blend it in, smooth out those edges. Just make sure that you're, um, I'm doing this right now. What did I just do? Oh, that's a bunch. I thought I touched it with my hand. Um, just be sure that you do this while your paint's still wet. Once your paint starts to dry, you're gonna need to let it kind of just set. And and I'm gonna use this sponge to kind of drag and sort of make a almost like a street there. I got a question or two mm -hmm. for you. Go for it. So first of all, that first sponge you used is it is it any kind of special sponge or? Um, no, I, no, it's not. It, I got it in a pack with these. So I think I got it on Amazon with, in, with a multi-pack. Okay, but it's got like a flat surface. It's got a flat surface and it's rounded. I've used it for suns. Like actually, this is one of the oldest sponges I've had because I used it for the, my, um, Yvonne Coomber floral thing, the one from way mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. when this is the same sponge oh, that I wow. used to do the sun on that. So it works. It's great. I, I really like it. I, I don't pull it out that often, but um, so this will be another but I'll definitely be using it for these kind of blending things in the future because this has really worked out well. So that means it'll be another million view video. Hopefully, we'll see. And the second question is: it's do My you, lucky sponge. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a preference on using brushes or sponges for blending? Um, I you know my go-to is kind of brushes, but. I don't, uh, when I'm doing beginner projects, I really like to do and uh, simplify as much as I can. So I feel like it works pretty well. Um, all right. I think, I think I can do my branches. I think I'm going to go ahead and just wash my hands off here. I left my, my baby wipes open so that it wouldn't be so noisy, but it can't help it itself. It's just a really noisy bag. <laughs> Yeah, so I reported so. a restaurant for um, food poisoning today <laughs> for the first time ever. Me and Spencer got real sick today. Mark didn't get sick, so he didn't have the refried beans. I think that's what it was. So, not, not fun. But we're better now. It's been. But I made her go to work. What? But I made her go to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Slave driver. Get in the studio. <laughs> get to work. Put in your two hours. <laughs> 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 I needed to work a whole lot more than two hours a day, and I did not have time to be sick. I took yesterday off to decorate our tree, and so today I was really planning on. Well, we were also hoping the contractor but would be back to exactly. finish everything up, but he didn't show. Well, no, I told him not to come because I was yesterday? sick. Yesterday? No. Well, yesterday he didn't yesterday, show up, but yeah. yeah. That's true, yeah. So today, I know, today I told him not to come because I was sick, so we'll maybe eventually get our house back in order. We'll see. All right. It's 99% done. It's just little, little things. I have. Ultramarine blue. I need to put some more out here. Sorry, just filler time. Just while I'm prepping here. Yeah. Talking about I'm glad everybody's stuff. here. Yeah. Welcome. I'm very glad. 
Thanks for joining us in our mm-hmm. Tuesday live show. Yes. And I noticed that in your Facebook group, you posted that you got some of your paintings for sale. I do on what? Etsy. Yeah, we have put some paintings for sale up on Etsy for Christmas time. So now I've got to make sure that I can actually ship them in time. But <laughs> I think if you order this week, there won't be a problem. <laughs> you wait too much longer than... Mm-hmm. Maybe after Christmas, but we'll see. I'm going to do my best. Or any holiday. Huh? Or any holiday. They can get them early for Valentine's Day. And true, true, true. Next Christmas, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I think this is sticking still. It's This is getting dry, so this is kind of tempting fate here. We'll see if we can get this on here. If I don't press too hard I think I can get some no see you can see right there where it just lifted that color so I'm just gonna leave it and let you dry that hun if you don't mind people want to know what your Etsy store name is mmm good question let me let me look it up real fast okay well, I'm not doing anything, so. Um, I don't know if I have it on here. Let me see. I don't think I do. Well, let me see. Nope. Well, I think if you just search Angela Anderson. Let me see what, what it says. Me, my profile. My shop, Angela Anderson Art, it says... So there's the paintings for sale. The right there's Cinnamon talking. She's probably like, "Hey, you use my technique?" No, she's not. She's moving to Arkansas. I'm really excited. Um, okay, California uh, coastline, flower garden, little flower, the woman. In, okay, so that's. Let me see. I don't know if it says up here. Let me see if it's. If I share it. Yeah, it just says Etsy me. Well, that doesn't help me. I was hoping it would give me the shop name, but it doesn't. Um, so, yeah, we've got several different ones there. Sunset Poppies, uh, Leaf Reflection, Wisteria, White Barn, Elephant, Desert Lightning Storm. I just tried to pick the kind of, you know, most recent ones that I could find that were easy, that would be easy to ship. So these are all 9 by 12 size except for... Um, some of them are 10 by 10, like that one and that one are 10 by 10s. But um, I think the rest, and that one's an 8 by 8, but the rest of them are 9 by 12s. So um, anyhow, yeah, so you can check that out if you're interested. It's kind of a drug. Good. Yeah, I know. These dry a lot faster, too, the the canvases. The, the panels take a while longer. Yes. All right. Um... So I've got, I'm going to get glazing liquid out and I've got a mixture of the burnt uh, umber and burnt, um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue here and I'm going to use this brush here. We'll see how it does. This is the 3 8 inch wheels blender and I'm just going to kind of go side to side here and create some. And I started at the bottom where I wanted it darkest. And then kind of went up and let it kind of fade out. So that's pretty much all we're doing for the foreground. We're not going to be putting in a lot of detail on it. I might grab a little bit of the lighter color, maybe a little bit of the cobalt teal. And do the same thing with that. Just kind of have a little bit of light and dark on there. Doing this side to side will kind of help it look like that kind of street, you know, thing. Okay, what is the scientific reasoning behind the girl lifting her leg like that? There's got to be some explanation for it. I don't know. Helps you lean in. Oh. 
don't know if you've ever done that. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think we ever kissed in the movies. <laughs> Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit more. I'm just picking up all these blues on my sponge here. I got a little bit of white. I'm going to... Now, you totally can leave it exactly as is. How, whenever you get it to the point where you like it, I would stop. So you don't have to continue to do more to it like I am. If you just decide I like it, then stop. I'm just adding a little bit darker. Some of these edges here. And then I'm going to switch it around. Get my lighter color. Push around with that. Now the second layer is going to be kind of catching a little bit more than that first layer did because the first layer had that water underneath. So if we wanted to, we could have watered, you know, added some water before we did this. I'm just making sure that I have a good, interesting stuff happening in our background. And like I said, you can stop at any point. I could have just left it the way it was that first go around if I wanted to make my life easier <laughs> but I kind of wanted to make it look a little more mysterious I don't know the scene has kind of got some really interesting stuff happening I think it's all kind of photoshop but So kind of layer upon layer, just slightly different colors this time. That'll kind of give it a little bit of interest, added interest. Okay, so now, and it looks kind of cloudy, I like it. I'm going to darken up these corners here. I'm going to get some that thalo or ultramarine blue and purple, and then maybe a little tiny bit of black. Little, little, little bit of black. So the two blues, purple, and a tiny bit of black. Get some of that. So I was just kind of. I'm barely touching the canvas here to let. Kind of create some dry brush swirly stuff happening. I'm going to go in the opposite direction with the white. Again, and kind of. What were you saying? I was going to let everybody know that uh, there's another great tutorial on blending like this. It's the uh, the tank video. <laughs> so if you want to, you know, get some more great instruction on painting, just check out the tank video. <laughs> A few clicks won't hurt anybody. <laughs> Some thumbs up. Mark's uh, Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Begging for views. On your <laughs> video. He knows that if it doesn't get enough views, I'll never paint him a tank again. That's why he's <laughs> asking. <laughs> he's like, sorry. Nobody wanted to see tanks, honey. I'm sorry. Yes, but it's such a great blending tutorial. You gotta, you gotta focus in on the positives here, huh? It is a good blending tutorial. I know. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that, I think. While that's there, I'm gonna just grab my sponge or my my fan brush. I don't know why I said sponge, fan brush here, and just tap. And somebody said. Said there, sent me an email saying that they had a teacher that got a blood clot from tapping against the edge of their finger. So oh, just wow. just uh, tap with the 
fat part of your tip of your finger, you should be fine. But Or you can use another brush. If you're worried. I've never been able to control it very well, and I tend to get these like long splattery things that I don't want, so. Must have been really okay. slamming that thing to Yeah, get a that's blood what clot. I was thinking. <laughs> you gotta be really pushing on it <laughs> to give yourself a blood clot. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more of that. I took out some of that when I did my second layer of blending there. There we go. And you have an art chat in your Facebook group about uh, how to deal with wanting to resell painting. How to what? How to resell paintings from these tutorials. Um, yeah, well, not necessarily from my tutorials, but yeah, just how to, just, just selling tips. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, how to give credit and all that stuff. Yeah, I think, so. I'm not sure if I went over to that, over that part in it. I'm sure I, but there's copyright information at the bottom of the video. So if anybody's interested in that, they can check that out. Okay. All right. So pretty happy with that. My background's still wet, but I think it's okay since I've got that other layer underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with my branches now. And I've got the fluid black here. It's the fluid acrylic, golden fluid acrylic here. It's just thinner and it's already, it's just easier to use with the liner brush. If you're not using this, if you're using heavy body acrylics with your liner brush, you're gonna have to really wet your brush down. So I probably ought to clean off my hands because I will touch my canvas and then the, can the paint will transfer, the dried paint from your hands will transfer onto your canvas. Acrylics stick to each other, so you'll end up with paint where you don't want it. Been there, done that. <laughs> you don't want to do it again. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get better about that. To wear gloves? Well, I'm just, no, not, well, yeah, really when you're using a sponge, you probably should wear gloves because mm -hmm. it's really not great to get your, even though these paints are non-toxic, it's not, repeated exposure is probably not great for your body, so. Oh, I got some black splatters there, but that's all right. I actually see some black splatters, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Ooh. Now that I'm seeing it. All right, just tap in. And I'm going to come from the corners and just kind of wiggle, 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 wiggle. Now this part is probably the hardest, but um, if you get an if you get a brush that's got a good enough um, long handle or you know handle um, come off from the edge and then just kind of wiggle it I, I would suggest don't don't try to get too um, Well, what am I trying to say? If you like, it, I will have a traceable for this, but I don't. I don't ever really suggest tracing um, on your branches unless you just trace like the major branches, because I feel like it's a lot harder to paint lines when you're trying to fill in the line. You know, like exactly. It's just a lot easier, and they look better if you just kind of let it happen organically. Um, that being said, if you haven't done trees before and you're really nervous about it doing it and liner brushes, you know, don't really, um, aren't really your thing, you could totally do this with a pen. So don't feel like you can't do this project if you can't use a liner brush. You know, a pen would work just as well. And when you, you know, if you do use a pen, the, the thing with the pen is that it's going to be, 
um, the same thickness, you know. So if you've got a brush pen that you can use, that's even better because then you can adjust the pressure and get some thicker lines out towards the edge. So you want your branches to be thicker out here and I'm just adding a ton of them. And real quick on your script liner. Uh -huh. <coughs> Which series of Princeton's brush is that? This is the Velvet Touch liner. <coughs> and you have a link to the brush guide down below the video. I do. Where they can check that out. Yes. They so also carry them in the um, um, Blick. So <coughs> oh, yeah. I have, right. I have a Blick, um, a link to the Blick uh, Velvet Touch brushes on my website. If you go to the FAQ, FAQ section, there's a, there's a question that says, uh, where do I buy art supplies? And that's one of the links under there. So. But the Brush Guys also has really good mm -hmm. prices. So. And 5% off with the code Angela Von Art. Yes. Send the links to your loved ones. Say, hey, stocking stuffers. <laughs> Making sure that I'm crossing over some of these branches with one another. I love this. It's almost kind of creepy, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like it's romantic, but it's also sort of, you know, these dead winter branches. So. And you did branches in that Maleficent video, right? I did. That one was a pretty good one. Yeah, those were very like angular and sinister looking. The more kind of. Um, choppy, the more angular you go with your branches, the more kind of creepy your branches look, just FYI. So I try to keep them kind of soft and flowy. So you can see how easy it is to get lines here when you have your paint thin enough, if your paint is sticking and you are not, you're not getting lines out of your brush, then uh, easily, they're not coming off easily, then that means you, you need to add more water. Because um, what happens with liner brushes, and I think that the reason people really don't like them, well, they are, you know, they're a little tricky to use. It kind of takes some time to get get used to them because, you know, there's not a whole lot of room for error with them, obviously. Um, but if you, if you wait for your background to be completely dry, even if you do make a mistake, you can wipe it off. So um, if you catch it right away. But... Um, but I think a lot of people, well, I know myself for sure, when I first started out painting, I didn't realize that you had to add so much water with your liner brushes. And once I figured that out, then it became a whole lot easier. So they're really not quite as hard, you know, as they seem. And I'm, I'm not holding this one because this is a script liner um, and the branches, the bristles are longer. I'm holding it much farther back on the on the handle than I normally would. If I was really trying to kind of be super careful and when I get into here and doing details, I'm gonna be holding it right up close to the tip. But when I'm doing these branches and I want them to kind of be soft and, and organic looking, I'm not wanting to do that. I don't wanna choke up on it and keep it from, you know, having that freedom of, but it can be difficult. So if you don't have a steady hand, you can, you can, um, you can study your wrist. So, or you, you know, you can always have them um, hold it wherever you're comfortable. Really, um, I also find that sometimes it's easier to do them in the direction that I would normally write. So, you know, if you're a right-handed person or whatever, you might 
try turning it so that they go in that direction. So it's a lot easier. And then it's a ton of branches here. There's a lot of branches. But is that a fluid black or just a watered down? This is black? the fluid black. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and would people be able to practice this on like just regular, like white copy paper? If they don't yeah, ruin, absolutely. They can just do it there. Mm hmm. Yep. Try different thicknesses of the paint. Right. And right. That's a great idea. Um, I actually also suggest, and when I did with, you know, this with beginners, if they were new to it, that we would use tracing paper. And you can lay the tracing paper over, you know, like, of course, with this, you wouldn't need to do that. But when, you know, if you're like practicing brush strokes, using tracing paper, set it over the top of your whatever it is you're trying to paint um, and then paint on it. Uh, you can kind of see what you're doing underneath, see if you're kind of, you know, staying in your lines or whatever you're trying to do. And um, so tracing paper, of course, you know, it's not it's not super strong, so you're going to have to. Um, make sure it doesn't tear and get too wet, but it works for, you know, things like this. It would work great. Okay, so we're almost done. And then you can add as many, you know, small little little offshoots as you want. I don't have time to do all of the ones that I might normally do, but, you know. Good thing these aren't flowers. Why? Because you tend to fill up the whole canvas with flowers. I do. So you've been known to block a sun or two. <laughs> well, flowers are way more interesting. If somebody's using craft paint yes. for this, would they have to water it down also? A little bit, but not as much. It's already, it's pretty much the same consistency as the paint that I'm using, and I did add a little bit of water too. Mine, even even though it was thin, still helps. And you're doing it wrong if you're using craft cheese. Right. <laughs> Let you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so our couple will be right in here. If you want it a little softer, you could use a different color. You can use a blue, you know, that was closer to our background color. Just blend these in a little bit more, just however you want to do it. Okay, good. And then let's do, um, we're going to have to let that dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to um, put in some of our dots, I think. Sing a song? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't following where you were going with that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just, <laughs> I don't know why it tickled me. You're funny. Use Q-tips here, and yeah, those are working. Cotton swabs. Barely, barely. T um, I pushed down. You can see what I was doing there. I was kind of twisting it and pushing the. Once I loaded it with paint, pushing it, so I had a smaller tip here. If I smushed it down, you know, and just tapped it, I'd get a bigger circle. But I kind of wanted it smaller, so I just kind of smushed it. Actually, this is working really good. So I don't think I need. I like that it's a little bit see-through-ish, you know, so got a little bit of that bokeh effect. We got the Australian translation, it's cotton buds. Cotton buds, interesting. Kind of like your friends. <laughs> They're your buds. Kind of 
putting them in 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 straight lines or you know straight ish lines also kind of helps with that stringed light effect it kind of makes it look like they're stringed lights yeah it's working pretty good I didn't go quite as dark with the background as I could have in this corner so if you need to if you're still you know not quite dark enough you could that's this is the time you need to do that before you put your lights on because you don't want um, cover up your lights so I'm gonna tap some of that in right there just a little bit darker around the sides there maybe a little tiny bit of black Actually, I'm going to use this. This will get it on there a little bit better for me. A little bit of black, a little bit of purple. A lot of glazing liquid, so I'm just kind of going in lightly. And it's fine if it goes over our lights. We can always put those back in, so I'm not too worried about that. This is the larger of the Deerfoot stipplers. So it's kind of like an adult deer foot stippler. It's a what? Like a an adult deer foot stippler. Why? What do you mean? Well, you said it's a larger one, so. Right, adult size. Yeah, it's not like a Bambi size. No. Okay. It's fun size. <laughs> fun size. <laughs> I don't know what I meant by that. No idea. Don't ask me. Creepy. <laughs> it's like candy. Comes in snack size, fun size, party size. <laughs> Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. And we'll we'll add more of the dots later. I'm just gonna let those set for now. And I think this is dry enough. I think our paint is dry enough. I'm gonna clean this out really well and we'll draw in our um, street lamp if I can get it on here without lifting the paint we'll see how we do so I want my two to be like right in here I think somewhere right in here so it's not coming off at all Little equal spaced right there center post and all the way down and I'm going to use a ruler so that I get it straight and we'll go ahead and just paint that in use this brush here this is the number two round and I'm going to go ahead and use this black that we used in our branches. Doesn't go quite all the way to the bottom. That ruler just kind of helps me keep it straight. So I'm starting to end out pretty pretty thin and then I'm going to press down harder as I go down. There we go. And then just give it a little foot at the bottom there. Bottom edge be a little bit rounded, maybe. Okay. the 
goes up a little too high. Shoot. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can get that off. I don't know if I can. This might go really badly. No. Okay, got it. That background has to be completely dry. Man. For that to work. So. I think you know what you're doing there. Well. You really like built said, up the suspense. Everybody was nervous. And then you're like, oh, look at that. It just came right off. It worked. Just like we practiced. <laughs> okay, here now in this point, you make sure you paint that a little too long and say, oh, no, what am I going to do? <laughs> Man, you nailed that. Good job. Good, thanks. Good dramatic pause and everything. So silly. <laughs> <laughs> Blue. It also looks like it's tilted on the camera for some reason. Is it tilted? It looks like it's tilted. Let me check. The canvas is tilted. Well, I know, but that looks like it's tilted. How did it get tilted? You you used a ruler. How how it's straight on that side. That side must be poking up or something. Like the canvas at the top is not. I need so, to be doing it from this side, maybe. It's an optical illusion. No, look at how crooked it is. How how did that happen when I, I painted it with the ruler? I don't, I don't know. I don't either. No, I'm mad. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> have to bring it out on this side to counteract it. Okay. Not a huge deal, but it's. I do want it straight. Mm -hmm. So, did you see how we did that? Like, why we did that? I hope that made sense to you. Um, since we were tapered so much on this side, we had to taper. So, there's an angle here. So, now I had to add an angle to this side for it to match. So, and I probably could even come out a little bit farther. So, which is fine. I mean, it doesn't matter if our street post is wider on this bottom area. It doesn't really matter at all because I've seen street posts that are like that. So if you were really upset by it and really wanted it to be, you know, symmetrical and thin all the way up, then... Uh, really the only thing would have been to try to paint in around it, which I didn't want to have to do, so. Just make, double check your angles there before you paint it. What happened was, when I put this on here, this must be raised just a little bit, so it pushed this up a little bit, um, on here when I was using my T-square, so I probably could have just set... Right here, this edge is a little higher than this part down so here. Where the, so where the pushed. canvas is folded over. Right, that corner, yeah. So it, it. it pushed my my T-square off square. Yeah, let's make sure that I've got my base. There we go. Well, it's not bad. It's not exactly what shows in the picture, but it'll work. Okay. Again, some blue, a little bit of white. I'm gonna spray my palette so it stays wet while I'm working here. And uh, the post has some decorative elements, so I'm gonna kind of do it in the blue, lighter blue first, and then. We'll add the darker. I forget this I came as a rotating viewfinder, so I'm sitting here. You know, stretching to see if it's in focus. Like, oh, <laughs> I can just tilt that down so I can see it. Hey, 
How about that? Pretty smart. Mm-hmm. Okay. So our that's way too long. I don't know why I did that that long, but that's all right. Very dramatic. So I want to go across the same distance, make sure that I'm at the same level there. Looks good. I'm winging this obviously, so I would I would draw this on paper first probably. Not if you want it exactly symmetrical, mine's not going to be perfect. But I don't care. It's one of those days. She's going honey badger on it. I am. Honey badger don't care. That's the PG version of what the honey badger says. <laughs> If you wanted to simplify this, you literally could just do a straight line here or, you know, a little bit of a curve here and here, a little bit of a circle, a little bit of a straight line and a dot or two and you'd be done. You like you don't have to go into as much detail as I'm doing here. That'll simplify it a lot. So, um, you know, I would say just simplify it as much as you're comfortable with with your own skill set. You know, you don't you know, you don't have to make it super detailed like I don't know why I'm doing, but I am putting a little bit of the lighter color on that street post there, just a little bit. All right, and then, so these are our two areas where our light is going to be shining through, so I want to get my white here. And really dab both those, and I'm going right up the middle of where my these posts are happening and then I'm going to smish out those edges try not to get into any wet paint if you need to let your background dry completely before you do this because when you dry brush you're really gonna pick up other colors um, if they're not dry wet because you're really scrubbing don't have a lot of paint on my brush and you can see how I'm wiping it off when I first lay it down so I wouldn't do both of them like I did I would just do one of them because I didn't I didn't need to this one was almost dry by the time I got back to smishing it around so it's better to just have do one at a time probably getting that glow And then, um... Need a massage? Yes. Give me right there. Think. Uh, I'm good. No, my neck popped. Okay, I think not. All right. It's just out. All right, get a little bit of quinacridone magenta. Very lightly dusting it. And I mean, by little, I mean, you can't even really see it on my brush. So I think that that's where people go wrong with dry brushing, maybe, um, uh, is that they, they just don't, they don't, I put too much paint out at one time, so just let it be very, very, very faint. We got a question about a paintbrush. Okay. They would like to know, do you feel a difference between a short handle and a long handle brush? I'm going to add some of this glow to my trees. What? Do you feel a difference between a short handle and a long handle brush? I mean, yeah, there's a little bit difference. Uh, um, the long handles I find are give you good leverage for when you're um, blending. I like the feel of how that back end of it really like wags around. It really like drags better um, than a thinner handle. The thinner handle or the the shorter handle brushes, you're really relying on your your um, 
your own motions more. But with a bigger brush like this, you can kind of hold it halfway and just kind of sweep it like this. And that back end is going to kind of carry that momentum and sort of do a lot of that work for you. You get a bigger, wider, you know, you, you get a wider area of blend. Uh, I'd have to hold it, you know, right on the very end of my brush to get the same uh, distance of blend, you know, blendability. So I can hold it way back here and do like this. And I'm getting all of this, you know, a full range of, of, of blend from the, sh the bigger handles. I get a lot of people, you know, telling me I shouldn't be using the, I, I don't know why people, I don't know why people tell you not to use, just use whatever brush works for you. I don't think that there's a right or wrong way of doing it. I mean, you know, whatever makes gets you the results that you like that's the right brush for you so um now we just try a few different ones and see what you like you know if you like the shorter handle ones don't feel like you have to switch to the big handles at all um some people don't like them at all you know so try and see what you think all right um so i'm gonna get my number one round now and get some more of this black and really it's kind of bluish so I'm going to get some blue and some white so the the one the, the post in the middle of our lamp post here or we'll go ahead and kind of start it down here it kind of widens out now that we've got our light in there and I did I did this first because I want this kind of behind then I'm going to add more light on top again so that's way that's the way you can get your glow kind of in between and behind and in it in it so I'll, I'll have this I'm going to do it light not all the way black so that I have kind of a see-through effect like it looks like that paint uh, the colors glowing through and then we'll put more white on top right in the middle here get a little bit of the black do it down here We're doing an, another, it's funny, this is the year for lampposts. I don't think I've ever painted a lamppost in a video, and I'm doing two this year. So I'm doing one for the $10 group for patrons. I've got a $10 Patreon group where we do our own private um, live stream once a week, and uh, we do a project all month long. And we're working on, let me see if I can get it. Out. Right so this is going to be a lamp post with a big old wreath on it. Uh, so that's, we'll have two more weeks to finish it. We usually take um, an hour and a half to two hours every week. Um, so, yeah. So if you love lamp posts and you need another lamp post in your life, go for it. That's a I need more lampposts. You needed more lampposts in your life. I put my pants on like any other man, one leg at a time. <laughs> but when I do, we make great painting tutorial videos. <laughs> I got a fever, and the only prescription is more lampposts. Oh, lampposts. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. Okay. <laughs> Check. Okay. This needs to come out a little bit more than I did it. By the time it gets up here at the top, it's a lot wider, a lot darker. There 
go. What are you doing, hon? Great. It's just amazing how that white paint just makes it look like that it's actually lit. I know. Yeah. That, it's the contrast. That illusion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the fun thing about paint. All right. Um, this one is way out here. It's a little bit thick. So these side ones, this angle comes down. It's a little farther away. This one, you're not really seeing that outside one. You can do it a little bit, but it's pretty covered by this one. Okay. There you go. Not bad. If a person wanted to get the really bright white light that's like in the reference photo, mm -hmm. is it just more white layered in there? Yeah, I'm going to be adding more white. I'm okay. not done. Oh, okay. All right. So these are all going to be kind of coming... So just find the center here, kind of make a dot at the top, go straight up and kind of just make a dot here and here where the center of your top of those are. And this is that kind of light gray here. It's not fully black. And side of it through and we can actually make it a little bit of red on that part A little bit of red, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. Just make that kind of inside part of the lamp. It's the, since we're looking at it from below, we're seeing a little bit of the inside of the roof line. So there's the trim here that is in front, and then that's the part that's kind of behind that we're seeing through that glass to it. So it's a little bit tinted. Okay. Stop fiddling here. Okay.
Okay, good. I'm gonna let that dry and dry well. While that's drying, I'm going to put on my couple, and I'm not gonna try to teach how to draw this. Sorry. <laughs> I don't, it's Tuesday night. <laughs> so. so while she's trace, while she's tracing that, you can give it a thumbs up, like, uh, subscribe. Yeah. If you haven't already. How many videos did you say you had on your channel? We have over 380 just videos right now, and I think by the end of the year we'll have 400 total. That's between this and Crowdcat and the Patreon ones. Crazy! Man. I can't believe. Uh, if you may mean name them all, I doubt that I could name them all. You know, off so the top of my head, there's, there's no way. There's tank. There's a tank one. We know that one for sure. <laughs> I altered the image just a little bit to slim up the guy and streamline his silhouette. It seemed a little bit um, bulky. His coat was kind of... Well, I'm, I'm just glad he's not wearing a kilt. <laughs> well, now I wish I had thought of that. side of your line, drawn line, so that you have room to do your outline and cover your, cover your trace. You've got a hat. You could always leave the hat out if you didn't want that. You can use whatever silhouette you wanted. If you want to put a giraffe in here, go for it, you know, like really could leave <laughs> leave it out completely just do whatever you know floats your boat so if you want yeah there we go if you don't want a couple don't put a couple in uh you know like they're kind of big compared to that lamp lamp now that I'm thinking I might have made them smaller but I'm not gonna do it right now because they seem a little bit big for the size of that lamp post but yeah Maybe not. I don't know. All right. Let's paint them in. Let's do it. What time is it? Seven away. All right. In, I'm making all right time. And the transfer paper was what? What? Transfer paper was what? Sorrel. Sorrel. Transfer paper. And it's available. It's water soluble. It's, it's available. My you, you can tell people. I'm. T well, I couldn't remember what it was. Oh, okay. But I will tell them that it's available <laughs> in your Amazon store. <laughs> Thank you. Link down below the video. Click it. Check it Thank out. You. Along with the palette, class palette that she's using there. All that fun stuff. It wasn't Sauron or whatever that seeing eye thing is. What? I was, the, the name of that seeing eye thing in The Hobbit was coming to my mind for some reason. Sauron or what, what was that called? Don't worry um. about it. I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think of the name, too. S Sauron, I think. I can't remember. Yeah. Somebody will be able to tell us. Wow, that is, like, in my nails. And I didn't wear nail polish today, so it won't come off when I take my nail polish off. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Well, I was going to do it today, but guess what? Food poisoning. <laughs> some reason I didn't really feel like doing my nails today. What? It's so weird. So lazy. I know. Okay. <sighs> That's get a little bit of yellow. Little, little, little bit. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Should be dry now. And if this goes on too opaque, you can use zinc white. You should just barely be able to see those. Those posts. So the you know the separation things. Thing about pops you can come just below it. And out the sides a little bit. Very little paint on here. Just gonna go over the whole. 
top of it and really bring that shine out. Once I, you know, well, I went in with the, the brighter color first, right in the middle, and then as I knew that I was pretty much gone, then I went for the outer area. So don't do, don't do the, don't start out here with your wet paint. Start where you want it brightest and then scrub off all that paint and then you can do the outer area, but you don't want to start way out here with fresh wet paint. You'll get a weird ring around your project. It won't look soft and fuzzy. Okay. We're pretty close. I'm gonna try to indicate some highlights on here. Probably the wrong brush to do it, but just kind of dab on some highlight color on my post. Oh, I forgot my little thing that sticks out this side right here. shape thing right here. want to leave the couple out. I kind of like it the way it is without it, without them, but go ahead and put them in. So I'm going to get some of that black and just do a shadow down there. And then this, they're kind of blue, so I'm going to use the ultramarine blue for them. Add a little bit of the, a little bit of the black. Keep them a smoky blue color. Yeah. And of course, his his side's gonna be lighter because he's facing the light. So if we want to, we can highlight him a little bit. This is married from two photographs that I pieced together. So it's not a it's a photoshopped image. I wonder if there'll ever be a vaping blue. Is a color? Yeah. Is that a thing? Well, you just said smoky blue, so just thinking, you know, for the for the you know more current times, vaping blue. Mm-hmm. No, hun. <laughs> Too tired to argue with you right now. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. So this past Sunday we did our bonus video for the month. We did. Where is that? It's behind you to the right. I can get it real quick. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah. 
Eat winter barn. Turned out good. I like it. Mm -hmm. I think I could have gone lighter red with this, then you would have been able to see the wreath on the barn a little bit better. But the other, other than that, I, I like it. I could have done my trees a little bit darker maybe, but I like that they look kind of far away. Foggy. Yeah, it's great. Red. obligatory neighbor rumbling through. Yep. Yep. You can see what I'm doing here. Just kind of adding that dark, that blue will look like he's highlighting on that side a little bit. lift in here. I guess you could do like a, a Santa silhouette. Yeah, yeah, you totally could. Just got her leg a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Santa, you could have a little... I saw an image with a couple... Holding hands with their little kid, too. That'd be cute. Like walking through, holding. You know, they weren't facing each other. They were kind of facing away from the thing. But if that was cute. A lady on her cell phone. What? A lady on her cell phone. Go with your Runaway mm -hmm. Bride series. Got a new one that I want to do. Got a new series that we're going to be doing. This year, that's going to be women, um, women, uh, from the back, you're going to see like their hair, just their hair and shoulders and knees and toes, knees and toes. Yeah, no, um, head and shoulders and, uh, so big that's not big um what was I saying oh kind of impressionist style we're gonna do it like real simple simple so it'll be a, I think a Tuesday night series this should be fun I'm looking forward to it just kind of lightly dragging that through add a little shadow there Probably too big to be doing this part. Now they 
I got the main part of the body. I can switch back to the smaller brush. Just taking too long with that little brush. I don't know what I just did with her chin. Wow, she got a big old chin. Let's fix that. Okay, there's her nose. Mouth. Is that better? Or worse? I don't know. It looks like worse. Okay, let's try it one more time. <laughs> There we go, that's better. Let's keep that. Very good, okay. That's getting stressful. And then he's kind of looking down at her, kind of like, he's got his chin tilted up, which is kind of a weird angle, um, I thought. But it kind of looks like he's sort of looking, you know, from under. Like it doesn't have his face tilted down towards her. He's got it tilted kind of back looking at her. I think it's because of his hat though. He's got a hat on, so maybe that's why. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or he's also got bifocals and he's trying to look at her. That's and see pretty her. much how we would look. That's how we look at each other. <laughs> it's totally how we look at each other. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's add a few more little dots for um, lights and we'll be done. So I'll get some orange here with my white. Push it to a point. What? So what? So what did you say about a series? People are asking. Oh, um, I'm going to do a series of... Well, I've got a picture on my phone or tablet, just if I can find it. It's a series of uh, women. You can look for it at the end. Here. What? You can look for it at the end. We'll finish up. Okay. Here, I'll open my phone and you can find it. Uh, well, I can't. It, I just realized it's easier just to do it than to try to explain it to you where it is because it's, it's kind of got a few thousand things. There we go. See, stuff like that. I'll probably have more of her shoulders showing, but it'll be, and it'll be super like kind of, not sloppy, but you know, just very like loose, very loose. So I think it'll be fun, fun series. And we're going to do a whole at least two, if not more. And just see how people like it. If they like it, we'll keep doing it. And if they don't like it? Then we'll find something else to do. Okay. Need a new fresh q -tip. Cotton swab. What? Cotton swab. I'm going to call it what I want. It's my channel. I'll say what I want. It's actually... <laughs> and the funny thing is, I don't even think it's that brand. It's not that brand. <laughs> Cotton bud.
cute. So you can really add as many of these as you want to fill it up. Add some ambiance to their little romantic scene here. Once this is dry enough, I'm going to just kind of lightly go over my lines with damp cloth. It'll take off all my little white marks that are still showing. Uh, took off her face. Okay. Took off her face. I did. I wiped it right off. At least I can still see the outline of it. She's disappearing. She is. Okay. She's a time traveler. And if you want to get, you know, fancy about it, you can go back in with the color that we added them on with white and either, um, it might be better to do it this way. Let's do it with the dabber. Do a little glazing liquid, a little bit of that light blue, maybe some zinc white wipe most of it off and then just kind of fog them out a little bit. Oh, I can just stop doing that while she, her face is wet. But like I said, you know, let it dry completely and then you can kind of fog, add fog over the top of them because there are some in the picture. I just, I'm not sure if I can get it in there while they're still kind of slightly damp. There we go. Get some around their feet. can do some around the lamp post too. Okay. And then yeah, there's just a bunch of different colored little dots here. Mostly reds and oranges. white cute get some yellow going we're pretty much done after this so Zinc white. I didn't really add much, use this much. Use it in a few of our lights. I'm adding way more than this in the picture. It's like flowers. I can't stop myself. Gotta fill it all up with little dots. Lights. <laughs> Super chat. I'm gonna give him some snow. I know Go you weren't it. done. No. So we got a super chat. Chit chest. A super chat 
from Mama Moff. Oh. And she says, to fund Mark's tank. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Ah, yep. They know the weight of my heart. <laughs> so anyways, again, if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe. Yeah. Click the show more, the list of all the paints and materials and brush guys and stuff and social media is all down below. Yes. There's a Facebook page, uh, Thankful Art, where you can join. It's It's monitored, so no meanies are allowed. Yep. But where you can share the you know, paintings that you've done from Angela's tutorials. Yes. And then also the Patreon groups for traceables mm -hmm. and more videos and all that stuff. All kinds of stuff. You guys still got two more weeks on left on that other street lamp that's much, much more realistic looking than this one. Um, daylight too, so. Mm -hmm. oh, if you're interested in that, you can mm -hmm. check it out. Sign up on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. And uh, we'll be back on Saturday. Saturday with Poinsettia. Poinsettia. Oh, I'm so excited about that one. Yes, flowers. Really <laughs> excited about painting some flowers. So I'm sure I'll be in a better mood then, too. <laughs> After I haven't been up all night. <laughs> hey, somebody wants a uh, palette scraping demo. Okay. So, oh, wow. oh my gosh! Wow! So that was super loud. I'm in sure. the in the Amazon store, there's uh, the posh palette, and if you scroll down when you're on that page in Amazon, there's the uh, suggested scraper also mm -hmm. for that. I'm not sure if it's this one or not. Yeah, it's, it's a utility scraper. Yeah, it's just. Um, okay, so usually I let them just dry overnight and then do it. But if you're going to do them with it, where they're fresh, you really need to wipe it off. Otherwise, you're going to have a Ooh, huge mess on your hands. Very artsy looking. Yeah. And then I spray them with a little bit of water and it'll come right off. It's, it's a lot easier to get them off when they're wet. So, um, and I keep a paper towel where I'm just wiping it clean. Um, so somewhere in between, like, you know, just wait, a, a little bit. I usually just, I don't like to do it wet cause it gets all gummed up in here. And then it makes it hard to get the razor blades out cause that paint dries like cement. And I threw up the link to the thing. But lot. it is way easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a catch, you know. <laughs> So I get most of the big stuff off, and then I'll go through. Don't get it on your painting. No, I won't. I'm just trying to cut myself. And I throw up the link to the thankfulart.com webpage. Where and then you can spray it again. Just wipe it off. What? What if you can sign up for the newsletter, get a free duck video? Yeah, be sure you do it on the right thing though. If you just sign up for the newsletter on my uh, without using the the pop up duck link duck link, it doesn't work. So you have to find the little pop up. If you got a pop up blocker, you'll have to remove it from your computer just for that. You know, to find the newsletter sign up and uh, on the thankfulart.com. So and. Uh, yeah, sign up for it on there, and then you get a free bonus video of the Mandarin duck. That was like four hours, I think. I don't know, maybe longer. I can't remember how long yeah, it was, but it, but it was a long one. It was killer, for and it sure. turned out really good. I like it. Oh, yeah. It's one of my favorite paintings from last year, so that would be a fun one to offer. So I would definitely add more fog. I'm not going to because I keep lifting off the color, but um, that would be something that I would probably do. I got a really weird looking snowflake right there. I'm just going to wipe off because it looks like he's spitting on her. So <laughs> 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 we don't want that. No, he's not a llama. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching with us today. Thanks for putting up with my bad mood and, uh, 
yeah, it marks puns. And uh, oh. Will. <laughs> joking, joking. Yeah. <laughs> Go get some chicken noodle soup and r- wrap up in a blanket. And watch some Oak Island. Oh, yeah, nice. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.